All right. Wow. Look at Nurse Professional setup. <laughs> Incredible. You guys, you guys, uh, you guys don't know Nur like I know Nur. I I met Nur, uh, man, it was a few years ago on Zoom, and uh, he was not the Nur I know today. That's for sure. Nur has evolved. The evolution of Nur. Nur, you should put together like a story of how your life has changed over the past four years. It's definitely in the process, man. Yeah, yeah. Man. And. The story continues, man. I'm I'm gonna give it a couple more years, man, to have that uh that bigger now wow, right? If you think about it, man, this is what I love all you guys think about is like two like imagine this, like you didn't know what you know now, like two years ago, right? When it came to like business knowledge, like take all the business knowledge you have now, like you probably didn't know that two years ago. And so knowing the business knowledge you know now, fast forward two years, how is your life going to look by implementing this knowledge over the next two years? It's going to be incredible. The future is bright if you remember that you're a lot smarter now than you were two years ago. That's a trip to think about. Because we think back like, oh, how has our life evolved over the past two years? Yeah, it's probably changed quite a bit. And it's changed quite a bit for the better, hopefully. But our starting point was like, we didn't even know what we know now. So if we take now as our starting point, knowing what we know now, wow, where are we going to be in the, the future? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool thing to think about. So, uh, let's go on a... Uh, one at a time basis here. And how I like to conduct these offer clarity calls is, oh, by the way, this is like the second official offer clarity call that we've hosted here. And the first couple of went really, 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 really well, but they seem to have, it's my fault too. They seem to have like, they seem to like go off topic pretty quickly because we get excited about the topics we're talking about, but we want to do our best to keep the topic on your offer. Like, what are you offering? And once you get the green light, once I give you the stamp of approval, like, yes, that's the offer, go ahead and crush it. Then I recommend you going and watching the training on how to actually sell it, like how to implement the sales process. And I will, I will link to that in the Zoom chat in case you can't find it in school, but what I don't want this call to turn into is a talk about like what the best way to sell what you're selling is. Cause that's not what this call is about. Cool. Keep it on topic of like, what are you actually going to sell? Because what are you actually going to sell? Like most people's offer prior to speaking with me sucks. And it's like, no wonder they're not selling. It's just a really bad offer. Really, really bad. And the, the reason for that is because the, list of things that you can sell online is not as big as you think. It's not as big as we think. Like the list of things that actually sell online in the high ticket coaching space, it's a very short list. So if you're not picking one of the things on the list, your offer is probably not going to sell very well in the high ticket space. You can sell a lot of different low ticket products and services online for sure. But if you want to make a lot of money with high ticket, you've got a very small list to choose from so that's what this call is about helping you pick the thing on the list that's actually going to sell so what we'll do is we'll go one person at a time and i'll get you to pitch me on your offer which is basically the pitch is going to be like this you can, you can either write this down and memorize it but the pitch is going to be like ted would you pay me a thousand dollars to fill in the blank would you pay me a thousand dollars to achieve Fill in the blank, dream, desire, goal. Cool. Nair, I don't know why you're here, bro. I'm sure you appreciate your offer's already solid. But if you want, Nair, you can go first. Oh, yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Once you, like, graduate from this call and your offer is already good enough, you don't need to come back to these offer clarity calls. Like, you, this, hopefully, this call, hopefully, is, like, a one-time thing. I don't want to see any of you guys ever again on this call. Come to the... Content review calls, sure. Come to the strategy calls, sure. 
but I don't want to see you guys ever again on this call. I want you to come on this call, get the green light, stamp of approval, and then move on. Cool? It's like kindergarten sandbox stuff here. We want you to move on ASAP. Cool. All right, we'll start with Nair. Yeah, so I mainly have a question, actually, and then I'll go on with, to my offer. Do you think it's beneficial to have a number, uh, I guess an HDQER in your offer, or just leaving it without one in certain cases? So my offer would be, I help men shed fat and build muscle, right, using detox. Um, would I want to say I help men shed 10 pounds of fat and build 10 pounds of muscle? Like just trying to wonder, I'm trying to think how, if that would help with my offer at all. Great question. So Nir mentioned HDQER. That's like a acronym that we use inside our program it stands for highly desirable, quantifiable end result. And if you guys have an HDQER, or as we like to jokingly say a hit occur, if you have a hit occur, it can help your offer sometimes for sure. But for something really specific like weight loss, dude, it, it's different than it's different than say making money, right? Because making money, like you can assume that everybody wants to make a certain amount of money. Let's say you help um, agency owners scale to 50K a month. Right? That, that's your thing. You can assume that all agency owners want to scale to 50K a month, right? But in your niche, bro, unless you're very specific on the type of person that you're helping, the size of person that you're helping, it's very hard to assume that like everybody wants to lose 10 pounds, right? Some of them might actually need and want to lose 50 pounds. Whereas other people, they just want to lose that last five pounds and get like under 10% body fat, right? So it's like, Unless you're super specific on the size of person that you're helping, it's going to be very difficult to pick a and put a number on that. But what you could do, and I would experiment with this a lot if I were you, I would experiment with different types of posts and different types of freebies where you're saying like, hey, this freebie is designed specifically to help you drop 10 pounds in the next 30 days. Whereas this freebie is designed to help you drop 30 pounds in the next 90 days. And you just like put out these different freebies and see which resonates the most. And you might realize like, wow, the one that gets the most clicks, the most attention is when I offer to help people lose the last five pounds, right? Just lose those last five pounds around your, around your midsection, for example. So I don't know what's going to resonate most with your clients, with your niche, but I would experiment with different numbers and see, because for personal experience, bro, we've done this. And this is the crazy, this is a really funny experiment. We put out, a, it wasn't even an experiment. We just turned it into an experiment, but we made a post saying like, hey, we just created a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to hit $50,000 a month with your own online business. It was like crickets. Then we removed the zero from 50K a month. And we just copy pasted the same thing. And we said, hey, just create a step-by-step -step instruction manual helping you hit 5K a month with your online business. Like, like 50 comments. Mm. Like everybody wanted it all of a sudden. Because 50K is completely unrealistic for a lot of people, whereas 5K is like the Goldilocks zone. Even 10K is like very unrealistic for a lot of people. Uh, but we've decided like if somebody wants to make 5K a month, although it's more realistic for them, it, they're not our ideal client because that's such a low number. We want to work with people who want to make 10K a month. So even though we might get more people interested in 5K a month, we don't want to work with them. So again, it's like up to you, bro, of like, who do you want to help and what do they resonate with? Because maybe you want to, maybe the thing that resonates most with your audience is people who want to drop a hundred pounds, like they're super obese, but you don't want to help those people. Maybe you prefer helping people drop that last five, 10 pounds, help them really polish up what they've already got. I don't know. But what I'm saying is you want to experiment with different numbers. Right. Okay. That, ma that makes a lot more sense. And I currently do offer different freebies that don't specifically say like, oh, okay, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, but it's more like this freebie is more tailored towards helping you shed fat. This mm -hmm. freebie is tailored more towards helping you build muscle. 
And mm. I've kind of realized that there are a lot more people who want to shed fat than build muscle. hundred well, percent. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. And so that's, that's kind of like the main selling point of the offer. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good distinction to make, man. It's the little nuanced things like that to understand. Now, yeah. if that's the case, then, um, yeah, start putting different numbers in front of that and see what resonates with people. Is it five pounds? Is it 10 pounds? Is it 20 pounds? Is it 30 pounds? Then you can start experimenting with the time frame. Is it two weeks? Is it 10 days? Is it 30 days? Is it 90 days? Like P90X? Like what is the time frame that they want to lose it? Right. And once you find that sweet spot, bro, you might find like the best angle for you is like 10 to 15 pounds within, you know, two to four weeks. That might be it right there. Mm -hmm. That gets mm -hmm. the alarm bells going in people's mind. They're like, oh, I want that. Cool. Okay. You want me to pitch my offer? Shoot, let's go for it. Okay. Hey, Ted, would you pay me $997 to help you get lean and build muscle through detox? You know what I'd really pay? I, I'm interested, but you know what I'd for sure pay you a thousand bucks for? And it's What's just, that? It's just me personally. I'd pay you a thousand bucks to help me build my ideal dream physique, my ideal dream body. Mm. And that ideal dream body is lean and muscular. But I want to make sure that it's not just some random lean and muscular body. It's my, like my dream body. Your dream body. Got gotcha. you. Would would anyone else in this room pay a thousand dollars for the dream body? Type a one in the chat if you'd pay a thousand bucks for your dream body. If it was a guarantee. Here we go. Look at that, man. The customers right there. Now, thanks, Nur. The reason Nur was able to say what he said and get everyone to type a one is because he's been working with me for a while. When Nur first joined. Nobody would type a one if he pitched. Like nobody was willing to pay. And now all of us are like, oh, I'd pay that, I'd pay that, I'd pay that, I'd pay that. I'd pay that. But Nir went through several versions to get to this point. So good stuff, Nir. Thank you very much. Uh, your offer is definitely set, ready to go. I would not come back to this class unless you feel like changing your offer, which I hope you don't because your offer is solid. Gotcha. Thank you, man. Yeah, cheers. All right. Nur just flew out of the nest. He's flapping his wings now. You ready? <laughs> and he's gone. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Fatty. Where's Fatty? 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but thank you for your comments. David. Where's David? There he is. David, what's up? Hey Ted. Hey, are you the are you the chef, the cook? Hey, it's me. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, man. I think I remember speaking with you like a year ago. You were talking about helping people cook and make good food, right? Right. I'm still there, but things evolved a bit. All right. I bet. I've built quite a business on the offline side, but now I want to be free, location free, and all right. I have a, I have built a quite a bit of following on my social media. I have around fifty thousand uh, people altogether. <laughs> Dude, yeah. how'd that happen, bro? You were like a, you were like a nobody last time I spoke with you. Right. I invested a lot of money in an agency, so they helped me a bit and. So I found uh, are these like fifty thousand real people or fifty thousand fake people? <laughs> I think they're all real since they comment all the time and they speak Italian. Oh well, that, okay. Cool. No, no, it's so real, and uh, I don't have a YouTube yet, but uh, I'm working on it. Okay, and, and yeah, so what I do is I share recipes, quick, healthy, and 
beautiful to see recipes that taste good and take no time to cook. And I communicate it in a funny way so people kind of like it and they go viral. And I I invite them to join my Telegram group to have the, the full recipes. So I'm building a private group and and um I'm just giving you a context, then I go to the offer. And um and I also take that their email in that process. So they have to give me their email and then they go to a private group where they find the, the all the recipes and they can talk with me for free. Yeah, my handle is Chef Davide. Oh, let me write. Maybe you can. Sorry. And um, yeah, so I'm thinking to um, to monetize my audience since I have a lot of traffic right now. Uh, I want to build a low ticket membership with um, where people can learn my method, where I went from cooking shitty looking average meals that didn't taste good and didn't look good and also weren't healthy. And I want to take them through a challenge to learn my method where they can learn how to cook um, nutritional food thanks to the Ayurveda uh, technique that I use and also how to plate good dishes and how to make them uh, taste good thanks to the balance of the tastes and consistencies and temperatures and everything in an easy way. And I'm not sure if I should offer this as a course or as a membership. And I was thinking, I mean, I want a membership so that that can become a stable, um, how do you say? Uh, Income stream. Monthly revenue. Yeah. Right. And I was thinking to start with this quick quick start course, as you said in the in your in your videos, and then having people stay by offering them other stuff along the way. So monthly okay. new workshops and Q and A's with me and okay. other chefs that we can host workshops there. And what is your what what is your income yeah. goal? How much you want to make per month? To start, I would like to. I mean, you mean right away or in time? Like ideally, so let's say over the next six to 12 months, mm -hmm. how much would you like I mean, to come month? Between five to 10K would be good. Okay. But my ultimate goal is to reach 20K a month. Okay. So let's just take the 10K number. Okay. So somewhere okay. in there, right? You want to make 10K a month. And you're thinking, okay, I got these audience members, got 50,000 followers, I got traffic. I want to offer them a low ticket subscription, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, how much do you want to charge them, you're thinking, per month? 27. Okay. Let's just say easy math. Let's just say 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. For you to make 10K a month now at 30 bucks a pop, you'd have to get 300 and I don't know, 330 people or something. Right. I don't know the math. Appro approximately 300 people to pay you mm -hmm. every month. Yeah. You have to convince 300 people. Thank you, 333. To pay you that every month. I don't even have that many people paying us. And I've been at this for a while. Like, that's, a, that's a big number, bro. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of us we're disillusioned into thinking that like it's oh i can just charge a low amount and people will pay and it'll be easy especially got, because i got all this traffic and in some cases that might be the case you could be an anomaly and you could have fifty thousand people who absolutely adore you and they'll happily pay you 30 bucks a mm -hmm. month no problem you get 330 people no problem but most people statistically speaking and this could statistically speaking most likely be you as well will struggle to get that many people to consistently pay you 
if to, to hit that 10k a month. That's a lot of freaking people, bro. So instead, what I'd recommend, considering your goal is to make 10k a month, mm-hmm. I'd highly recommend you think about how can I put together an offer that's worth at least a thousand bucks. And then rather than trying to get 333 freaking people to pay you every month, you just need to find 10 people. 10 people. And then whoever of those 10 people, let's say you have like 50 people considering taking that $1,000 program. 40 of them can't afford it. Okay. 10 of them still do. These are 10K. But for the other 40 people who considered it but can't quite afford it, where do they go? They go into your $30 a month program. So you downsell them. Mm. So now every time somebody can't afford that high ticket program, they get put into your monthly recurring revenue pool. And that over time builds up. So over time, over the next year or so, maybe a couple of years, you could build it up to 333 people. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, you're making 10K a month like that. Like you could, bro, with the amount of traffic you have right now, you could be making 10K a month next month but not from low ticket. So I really like, if if you and I were to race right now, bro, and like you were allowed to sell a, you were allowed to sell a thousand dollar program and I had to sell a $27 program and it was like a race, first one to make 10K wins, you'd probably win, dude. If you and I were to race right now, ready, set, go, you can sell a thousand dollar program. I have to sell a thirty dollar program. First one, ten k wins. You're gonna win because you have that leverage of pricing on your side. Mm-hmm. So knowing that to be true, knowing that it's faster to hit ten k a month with a thousand dollar program, why would you do anything but that? You know, mm-hmm. like. Downs, I understand you want the passive recurring income in the low ticket subscription. I understand you want that. And you can still do that. But I would just recommend downselling people into that. And sure, every now and then you can promote the community to your people, whatever. But I would lead and I would prioritize that, uh, lead with and prioritize that high ticket option first. So much more powerful. Okay. Yeah. I think with that comes also that I have to learn how to sell on the phone and all the other stuff. Not necessarily, not 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 a thousand dollar program. Not necessarily, you could sell a thousand dollar program with a sales page. The offer just needs to be really, really good. Mm. Like if I saw this, this is why we're on this call. It's like you asked me, Ted, would you pay X? Would you pay a thousand dollars for X? I want to know what X is, and I'm thinking just off what you said. I'm thinking X could be private one-on-one cooking calls with David. You get four of them per month. I would happily pay a thousand bucks for four cooking calls with you, bro. Are we going to make a meal together with David, the guy on Instagram that I, that I love. He's going to cook with me. Offer clarity around uh, the pricing. So that's it. Sorry. People are auto unmuted when they got to change the setting. Anyways, um, if you put something like that together, bro, and I'm not saying what I just said is the offer, but it could easily be part of the offer. Uh, yeah, I think you so could. Can we go, do you have the time to go like one minute deeper in this yeah, high pitch, ticket yeah. offer? Because I, 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 I struggle to find something that to me sounds uh, worth that money without going to the money side, money making side. So like, cook to make money or which I don't want to do at the moment. Mm. So you want to help people cook delicious meals, right? And so my beautiful my my brand is called uh Cucina Energetica, which means uh energetic cuisine, if you will. So what I do is I want people to cook food that tastes good so that it gives them energy in that, that looks great, so that gives them energy in that side and to other people as well. And that also is nutritious 
and healthy and light so that they can feel great and have more energy. Cool. So what we'll do, let's do a little fun game here right now. If, if, uh, if you guys in the audience, if you could type in the chat, what you think would be a cool thousand dollar offer for David. And by the way, did you say David or Davida? It's, it's Davide. Davide. I knew it was something Italian. Like <laughs> Davide. But you can't call me David. Okay. So, um, you guys feel free to type in the chat some ideas, but I'm thinking like, dude, if you were to charge a thousand dollars to people to, and you make it like super blatantly clear, like this, you say something like, I will turn you in, I will, I will transform you from a completely average or crappy chef into a master chef in just 30 days by working one-on-one -on -one with me for a thousand bucks. I think that would get a lot of people, bro. I would like leverage mm -hmm. the identity side of things of like, you will be a master chef in a month. I guarantee I'll teach you how to make four incredible mouthwatering, beautiful dishes that will look like this. And you show them the picture, you show them the plating, you show them the ingredients, you show them, you know, everything, how to make it. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily right. even need to be doesn't necessarily need to be one-on-one. -on -one. It should be one-on-one -on -one initially as you, as you get going with it, but eventually it could be small group. But yeah, I think, uh, I think that would be great. Okay. So you would pay for that. Yeah. Without you being a chef that makes money with it. Yeah. Just, just, and, and you'd have to like have some bullet points of like the benefits, right? Which is like, like um, some of the benefits of being a master chef would be something like impress your friends and family, take, you know, beautiful Instagram photos. Um, what else is the benefit? Um, have a, have a hobby that fulfills your, your soul or something like that. Right. Or like, or like taps into your creative side. I right? just have like some of the benefits of being a master chef, but I think the biggest one is it's going to be like impressing people and taking beautiful photos and being able to make meals that you're proud of doing something that's deeply fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, but the, and the to, thing, yeah. to take less time cooking is also a big one. Sure. Take, take less time cooking, but um, so they, they can cook quickly. Yeah. But what I really want you to take away from this call is just like the logic of selling high ticket first and then downselling to the low ticket. That is freaking huge, man. Mm -hmm. in, terms of, in terms of what you offer for a thousand bucks or more, you could even charge 1500 for that, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. I think you could play around, experiment with different things. I think almost anything would work if, if your people love you and they just want to connect with you. But um, then you would downsell to like, you know, the membership and much more group calls and all your course material. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave with that. Okay. You think you can do that? Yeah. I struggle to see the value of, of, of such a high ticket offer at the moment. Okay. But... Little pause guys type a one in the chat. If you suck at cooking, or your average, but you want to be really, really good, and you want to take, you want to make really, really beautiful food photos of your meals, and you'd pay a thousand bucks for that. See, Tori wants it right now. Tori, Tori needs it. Bro. <laughs> me. Tori needs it. No offense, Tori. Just kidding. <laughs> See, you already got some customers right there, dude. Um, now, actually, let me unmute Tori if, she, if we can. Tori, could you tell us why you want that? Right. I'd love that. Hi. Um, I definitely need food to be more of a focus on one, my content, but two, I want to learn how to perfect this fast. I hate looking at recipes. I want it to be intuitive and I want to make good food for cool people. <clears throat> looking at recipes, that, that is a great headline. Hate looking at recipes, question mark? 
or hate following recipes? Yes. Tony, do you work with it? So it's it, is it your job to cook or? No, I teach people how to heal their body using food. So cooking mm -hmm. is a big part of that. Okay. And right now, is it a problem because you hate cooking, looking at recipes? Yeah, I would say that. I definitely cook for myself, right? But it's just like smoothies and blended soups and I'll throw a bunch of raw vegetables together with a sauce on top and there's no intention behind right. it, creativity. And I just make mm -hmm. food to fuel me instead of what I want it to be. Tori and I make smoothies the same way. We look at what's in the fridge and we throw it in there, hit blend and we're good. <laughs> so you, you also might struggle to have people like the idea of doing what you offer because the food isn't inviting, maybe? Correct, 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 correct. Okay. I can, uh, this one I can understand because it, it's, uh, I'm empowering you to work better and to have more clients, I think, right? Or, or, I so guess. That's maybe, maybe the the more powerful of, of motivation behind it. I don't feel like you need to, I don't feel like you need to be boxed in though and to have everything skewed, like make money with this or with clients, get clients with this. Cause I feel, I feel okay. the benefit in my personal life. Cause if I want to cook for my man, like I want that shit to be good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go, and it goes the other way with the other gender too. It's like, if a guy wants to impress his girl, right. like he wants to be able to cook a nice meal. I think there's a, there's a, the hate looking at recipes, yeah, recipe free cooking, like Ted quoted, and then like on honestly, like impressing people with yeah. your cooking skills, like those two things in itself, like for a thousand dollar offer, that's a thousand dollars is not a lot of money, guys. Like when you're really in this game, like it's really not a lot of money. And I've seen a thousand dollar offers for teaching people magic tricks purely to impress other people. I've seen thousand dollar offers to teach people piano purely to impress people. Like learn to play piano to impress your friends and family. Sold. Hmm. Yeah. Well, humans have like this drive to impress others. That's why little kids are always like, look, look at me. Look, look, mommy, look, daddy. And they're just trying to impress their parents. You know, we all want to impress other people. Like here's a magic trick. Here's a piano. Here's this beautiful dish as you're doing, David. Like mm -hmm. you're just impressing people and people want to be able to do the same. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's worth a thousand bucks for sure. But uh, yeah, it's, sorry, yeah, we we just got to move on to some other people now. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think uh, I think you're thank solid. you. Thanks, Tori. Thank you, guys. Uh, ba -ba. all right. Who wants to go next? Michael Sad. I won't take long because we already talked. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I uh, since we talked, like I did, I did a lot, like a big deep dive into um, into what uh, what we had chatted about, and I'm super happy that Susie and Tori are here because they've seen me be very frustrated. So um, this is going to be a 180 for them too. Um, so uh, one thing we talked about was like I create good classrooms. I create engaging classrooms. I have people coming to see me. Uh, people want to take my classes. I teach it at college. People want to take my classes, not necessarily because of what I teach, but how I teach and uh, the fact that I create good communities. And so um, we talked about the idea of retention and keeping more clients, keeping more clients. So I went through a whole thing on the weekend uh, over like, what does that look like? And I broke it down to the idea of um, setting up, setting up a really solid coaching, um, structure. Like, what does that look like? How are you actually giving people value, um, actual teaching strategies? So when you are actually coaching people and going through, um, what are some things that you should say? How, are, how should you actually guide people to understand versus actually just telling them, giving them advice? Um, and then how do you structure them to, you know, after the fact with, with homework, with exercises, with things when they come back to you in the next section that you can actually talk about, um, things like, you know, preparing yourself before, uh, a session, reflecting on things after a session, and then going through things like engaging 
with just general engagement with your clients, things that will keep them coming back and saying, wow, I actually feel heard. I actually feel listened to. Uh, I actually feel like I'm a human rather than just maybe a, a dollar bill or, or a, a, a client and then actual delivery strategies so that you can have the most boring thing on the planet. But if you deliver it and you are exciting and you are excited about these things, people tend to get excited over what you're excited over. And it doesn't really matter what it is. It's the fact that you're giving it with a certain amount of energy. And so I, I kind of boiled it down to. Would you pay me $1,000 to help you retain more clients by optimizing your coaching experience? Of course, bro. Round of applause. That was like a freaking uh, Oscar speech right there. It was beautiful. Uh, cool. Yeah, dude. Like, uh, I, you know, I can, can I open up the message you sent me on school? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys can see this. Um, so Mike came to me a couple days ago and told me about well, everything he just told you just now prior to that pitch at the end. And we he didn't really have that pitch. And so we're talking about like, I'm like, dude, like what do people really want from you? Yeah, all that stuff you just talked about is really, really cool, but how's it going to benefit them? And it's going to benefit them if you mention the fact that you're going to help them retain more clients, right? So uh, even here, you said number five makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know if you still feel this way, but number five says, showing coaches how to build loyal client relationships through optimized training experiences. This doesn't even mention the monthly recurring revenue, right? Mm. So everything you just said was like spot on. I would just add that key word of like helping coaches make more monthly recurring revenue by optimizing their community coaching experience. Something okay. like, that. all I want to know is that you're going to help me make more MRR. If I have right. to do handstands or wear a freaking clown nose, like I'll do what I got to do, but I want to make more MRR. In the case of working with you, it sounds like I'm going to be optimizing my course material, my Zoom calls, my onboarding emails, my email sequences, like all everything required to make sure someone has a great experience and so they don't feel like a dollar bill, but they feel like an actual friend that you're working with, right? Totally. And that is like not taught really anywhere. So I know the value that's going to be massive. It's super rare and super niche. And the bottom line is it's going to help people make more MRR. For sure. So For sure. we were talking with David earlier. Is he still here? Or is he gone? He might be gone. Yeah, he said he had to run. He said he wants to retain 333 people a month. And yeah. I was thinking how like that's, that's a tall order. That's a tough ask. But with Michael Sad's program, yeah, you could probably retain 333 people if you know how to keep them engaged and keep them making progress through your course material and everything. So yeah, man, like you could help people exactly like that, help them scale up their, their MRR. Cool. Um, awesome. In terms of delivery, just real quick, in terms of delivery, how would you envision this? Like I I've always gravitated towards group coaching. Would you package this as like a one-to-one -one thing as, as a group coaching kind of community or <laughs> something else? Initially, I always recommend one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Initially, because that's going to give you the it's going to give you the depth that you need to really flesh all this out it's really yeah. easy to deep with one person and so you can really if you can help one person in a big way you can then extract what you did with that one person and then you know multiply it for everyone else in the future cool. with course content so i would go um Here's the flow. Let me draw this out. It's actually good feedback for everybody or a good strategy for everybody here. So first, one-on-one -on -one to practice the material. Get them a great result. Slash get them to say, wow, this is amazing. Right? That's the first step. Once you do that, then I'd recommend filming a course based on what you taught them. And this course can be filmed live in front of a small group on Zoom. 
So for example, I could take everyone here in this Zoom and I could record a course live in front of all you guys. And after each module, stop for a quick Q&A. Any questions about what we just covered, right? So I can film the whole course live so it doesn't require any willpower. I can just shoot it live in front of you guys. Very interactive. Once that course has been filmed, now that course covers all the basics to succeed. It covers all the FAQ. Now I can introduce ongoing weekly calls. And I'd encourage people to not even show up to those group calls until they've gone through this course material, which should only take them a couple hours, right? To get the basics dialed in. So there you go. Those are the three steps. It's like, just flesh it out with somebody, put it into course material, and then ongoing weekly group calls to fill in any gaps, kind of like what we're doing right now. Like, dude, 95% of what you need to know, I've already recorded in course material. You and I, what we're talking about right now, this is the, like the last 5% customizing it with you. Mm -hmm. It's custom for you. Custom advice. Boom. Do you, do you think this would work for you? These three steps? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, a, would you change anything about them, or you think that's pretty solid? No, that's um, I no, that's solid. That's the exact process that I was looking for. Cool. Because if you if you skip this step, dude, people are just going to be asking you the same questions over and over and over again on these weekly group calls because they're not going to have any FAQs answered. You know? Yeah. So, Cover all the cool. basics in the course. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And that course, by the way, that's going to get need to get refilmed like every six to 12 months because you're going to have so much more data coming in of like what works, what doesn't work. You're going to be able to clarify it, simple, make it simpler for people. And so, yeah, I'm in the midst of re-recording our course material again right now. For sure. Awesome. Thank well, yeah, you. Man, you've got a freaking fantastic offer. I think uh, you definitely have the green light, stamp of approval. Get on, get out of here. Leave the sandbox, fly out of the nest. And uh, awesome. go, make, go make some money, dude. Go make some sales. Awesome. I think you're you. free, you're free, one of your first clients, dude, could definitely be someone in this contemporaneurs group. I was going to say, anybody in here, uh, feel free to message me on on school. Um, I you know, I want to work with some beta clients here on this. Um, feel free to message me. I might message you, bro. I got cool. I got to grow my MRR too. Awesome. Thanks guys. Thanks Ted. Appreciate your time. Peace, peace, bye. Thanks. Thanks Amanda. All right. You guys could sense the enthusiasm from Michael there too, right? Like he's clearly teaching something that he wants to teach. And it's like you want to find that thing that like you're so enthusiastic to teach and can't shut up about. Like Tori doesn't shut up about detox. Michael Sad doesn't shut up about um helping uh, uh, presenting and and teaching and creating awesome communities like whatever you can't shut up about like that's a really awesome thing to make a community about and build your business around so that's a good internal um internal signal internal direction for you internal compass all right well who wants to go next so we got uh david says Thousand bucks to become a master chef, stamp of approval. Michael, would you pay me a thousand bucks to grow your MRR, stamp of approval? Uh, Nur, earlier, would you pay me a thousand bucks to build your dream body, stamp of approval? Who wants to go next? Pitch me on your thousand dollar offer. You can just unmute and say, Ted, would you pay me a thousand dollars to fill in the blank? Hi, Ted. Hey. Okay, so um, would you pay me a thousand bucks um, to help you to uncover or release the um, four major blocks um, in a month um, from stopping you from achieving your life that you want or like to make you feel much better in your life. I probably would, but not when you put it like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I know with the wording I'm struggling. 
Yeah. And that's the thing for, for most of you guys, every, in fact, everybody in this room right now, I would pay you a thousand dollars for whatever you want to help me with, but you need to word it in a way that makes me think like, yes, that's exactly what I need and want. And so yeah. I think that's the issue for most of you guys. It's not that you guys don't actually have something to offer. It's that your messaging of it is just so off that, uh, that, that I unfortunately wouldn't pay you. So I don't know what the four blocks are for one. Number two, offering to help somebody achieve like any life goal that's reserved for like Tony Robbins and Oprah and hella famous people. <laughs> we just assume they're like, you know, master guru, God, you know, but unless you're super, super, super famous, uh, you need to be super, super specific. Yeah. Right. Like for example, for example, watch, just picture this mental exercise, do this mental exercise with me. Some random person comes up to you on the street. You don't know who the hell they are. And they're like, hey, I'll help you achieve anything right now for 50 bucks. You'd be like, I'm kind of busy, but thanks. Mm -hmm. Versus someone completely random comes up to you on the street and they're like, hey, I noticed your posture is kind of like bent over and you kind of got the nerd net going on. Would you pay me 50 bucks to completely fix that and eradicate that forever? You'd be like, yeah, man, yeah, it's a big deal. Here's 50 bucks. Please give me the secret sauce. Like they, you'd pay them because it's so specific. Fix the nerve, okay. fix the posture. Even though you so, don't know who they are, you pay them because it's so specific. So, okay, with the wording, yes, how to impress uh, would be um, helpful because, um, because what I'm thinking is to make, let's say, a month, uh, monthly, not monthly, but one month offer no, sorry, my kids uh, are interested when I'm talking. <laughs> so um, basically what I do, I, I want to um, do uh, sessions one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a person to deal with the, with the most urgent things that came up as a problem, as a block, uh, coming from traumas, coming basically from the past that are affecting them right now. And also um, look into certain coaching uh, on their perspective, um, why they feel that way or why things are happening that way, how to understand the universe more and better and how to, um, by changing perspective, change what they can achieve and how they can, you know, take action that comes yeah. from themselves and specifically for them. So it wouldn't, I don't see how I can do that for the group. Um, because it's very specific in going into personal traumas and past. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't see how you could help somebody in a group setting, right? Because it's very specific With, to them, right? Yeah, for now, yes. Okay. So what am I doing on this call in a group? Am I not helping one of you at a time in a very specific way? Uh huh. But then those sessions, let's say with one person, it's about two hour session. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be. I could spend two hours with you filling out your offer, or I could spend ten minutes with you right now. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to pay me extra, I can happily work with you for two hours on this. Or yeah, we'll this chat right now for five ten minutes. I can help you get clear, and you can move on. If you want more depth later, we can talk. Right. So anything that you can help one person with one on one in private, you can help a group with. Okay, so then why I'm saying it's one on one because um, those problems would be different for every person that comes, yeah. and the root cause also would be different. Plus, they need time to go through all the hurt that they they been carrying since since that trauma happened or since sure. the situation happened, and it would be very very specific. So. Um, Going into uh, like a group setting, I feel like that presence wouldn't be there just for them so much. And then others, I don't know how much, um, or I don't want to count on people who are not uh, exposed to that, you know, or have not got any experience in this uh, to give presence. And it can be annoying for some people, it can be... Um, um they might um 
feel like they don't have patience, etc. So like like this. Sure. So obviously one on one creates a di- it's a different atmosphere. It's a different space. It's a different vibe, for sure. Yeah, we can all agree that one on one coaching is very different than group coaching. But what you can do is, and I recommend starting with one on one, just like I said to Michael. I was like, I recommend all you guys start with one on one. And you get good at that and you get people results. And then you can start extrapolating stuff from that and putting it into like a course material, right? So what you can do is you can find a list of, or you can create a list of like the 10 things that are super helpful for people to know and understand based on all your one-on-one coaching. And you can start putting them into, into workshops. So you can then host Mm -hmm. group workshops like, uh, let's just say like childhood trauma release made easy or something. I'm just making this up based on this, but you can host different workshops, helping people with various things in a workshop setting. They know it's a group setting and you teach them some really cool stuff. And at the end of these workshops, you can do some Q and A. Yeah. Right? So yeah. That's a good can... idea. Very good idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be like various topics that you're going to help people with. Like one of them is going to be maybe like trauma release. The other one's going to be like goal setting. The other one's going to be like emotional mastery. The other one's going to be like lifestyle habits. I don't know, you know, relationship mm-hmm. mastery, child bonding, whatever. Different categories. So you host different workshops for different categories. And there's a QA and a at the end. That could be the extent of like your, your group stuff. It's just you just do workshops followed by a Q&A. And if they want one-on-one stuff with you, they book in one-on-one calls with you. Um, mm-hmm. But 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 we're 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 getting again outside of the scope of the actual offer itself right now, because I still wouldn't pay you a thousand dollars for what you said. So everything we just talked about is kind of like a moot point because no one's going to give you money anyway unless we get your messaging dialed in really clear. Mm-hmm. So so. Before you start thinking about, oh, I don't know if I could do this in group setting or what kind of workshop should I do? It's like, we got to figure out like, what is the thing that someone would pay you a thousand bucks for right now anyway? And it's not going to be, I'm not going to pay you a thousand dollars to relieve the four blocks so I can live my dream life. Right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're Tony Robbins or Oprah, then I'm for sure I'm going to give you a thousand bucks because like you've already clearly proven yourself. You're hella famous. I love you. But uh, you, I don't really know who you are. And yeah, yeah. So, I don't know who you are. You got to be super specific about what you're going to help me with. And what I recommend you do in your case is something called bait and over deliver. So I'm sure you've heard of like bait and switch, right? Yeah. Bait and switch is not cool. That's like when you like tell someone you can do something, but then you do something completely different and then they're, they're not happy. But when you do bait and over deliver, that's where you 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 put the bait on the hook that they want to bite. And then you give them so much more than they could have ever anticipated they could have ever asked for. So you give them you give them what they really, really deeply want and need. So sell them what they want and then give them what they truly, truly need and deeply, deeply want. So For example, if you tell me right now, Ted, would you, or ask me right now, Ted, would you pay me a thousand dollars to, for example, would you pay me a thousand dollars to have the most loving relationship ever with your girlfriend? I would strongly consider that. Because now it's like, okay, cool. Now we're getting into like, oh, you're going to help me with my relationship with my girlfriend. Help me have like the best relationship ever. So Mm -hmm. I bite, right? That's the bait on the hook. So I bite. Now I'm hooked. All right. Now I'll give you a thousand bucks. Now inside your program, now you're like, okay, Ted, if you want to have this beautiful relationship with your girlfriend, we got to work on yourself. We got to relieve the trauma. We got to dial in the lifestyle habits. We got to switch up your thoughts, thought patterns, right? So you're helping me go so much deeper on on me which is what the stuff that you help people with right self-improvement yeah in the four blocks yeah well more when when you help us with the um, manifesting part i help with um um with the attraction part so because that past 
if we don't solve it, then it can uh, it reflects either way it, subconsciously. And I just help with the subconscious, basically, what we don't know that we don't yeah. know. See, you can help with whatever you want. Your process honestly doesn't matter. You can do whatever. You could be some weird thing where you tell people to wear a clown nose and do handstands. It doesn't matter what you do inside your program as long as it helps them get the result that yeah. you're promising, right? So I want to know what that result is. What's the end result? And I'm telling you right now, there's only there's only four that you could possibly say that would make someone pay you high ticket. And that's going to be you're going to you're going to help them with their relationship, as the example I just gave you. Relationships, you're going to help them with their dream body, their physique. You're going to help them alleviate pain. Chronic pain, you're going to help them make more money, dream business, raised income, career, etc. So if you, you if you pick one of those four. Guaranteed people pay a thousand bucks. Now inside your program, you can still help them with all, anything you want to help them with. The subconscious, the mental reprogramming, all that stuff. But you've got to promise one of those four things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> it's harder, it's, not, it, 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 it's, it's a lot harder not knowing that those are the four things. If you didn't know those are the four options, you'd think you'd have like 400 options and you'd be all over the place. So we just narrowed your focus down to four things. Now it's a matter of how can you get behind one of these four things? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. How can you associate what you're doing with one of those four things? Do you want me to tell you right now? Yeah. Something to think about. Okay. I, mean, I mean, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, well, relationships definitely can change. Um, first of all, with yourself as well, and with others, then as a like a reflection, because if you can feel better in yourself with yourself, then uh, you feel easier with other people as well. Um, so maybe the relationship part would be I the think, easiest. I think the relationship one would be freaking amazing. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, then, but 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 when you pitch it, you can't pitch someone on it. And say you you can't say like, hey, Susie, would you pay me a thousand dollars to have a better relationship with yourself? Self love no. is not one of the four. It's it's relationships with others. However, you can use self love as like one of the tools. So, would you pay me a thousand dollars to have the best relationship ever with your wife, with your husband, to improve that, to you know. Okay, so instead of going this like basically really taking a wide approach that person comes in with their own top four basic um, like major blocks in their life and I help them to um, dig into those blocks, I just basically choose the path that I'm looking to help people with. So let's say if it's relationship, okay, so we're going we're gonna to dig into those aspects uh, and those past aspects that uh, affect relationships basically it's something like this no well almost you're still going to help people with those four blocks yeah what you do inside the program doesn't change the only thing that's changing is the messaging you're putting on the front yeah so so all okay. the things that you wanted to help people with prior to this call today, like you, you had some idea of what you wanted to help people with prior to this call today, right? I don't want to change that at all. Mm -hmm. Still put the four blocks, still help people live the best life ever. All I'm saying is that you need to put a new sticker. Yeah. The front, the front, change the front end label uh -huh. that uh, people are attracted to buy it. The bait and over deliver. Okay. So bait me in with the thing that I want to buy, which is, Help me have the best relationship ever with my girlfriend. And then give me all the stuff that you want to give me, which is the four blocks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if, okay, you yeah. don't, if you don't do that, if you don't come at it at the angle of, I'm going to help you with your relationships, something like that. If you don't come at it with the angle, you're just going to end up being someone who offers general like therapy and counseling. And it's going to be like some random, you know, some random person offering random therapy and counseling and like life coaching to random people. And like, there's going to be nothing special about what you do. 
because it's yeah. so generic. Yeah, yeah. You can't really cut. There's nothing for you to carve out. You know, you get a car. You want to carve out a space for yourself on the internet, and the way to do it is by claiming one of these four. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, I'll have a I have more thoughts about that. Well, go ahead. Uh, go ahead and use this time right now to pitch me on your thousand dollar offer. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Say the words. Mm. Okay, uh, would you pay me a thousand pounds or dollars um, um, to help you improve the uh, the worst relationships in your life currently? That's an interesting angle. Um, it's an interesting angle. But I don't think many people are ready for that to say like, hey, like, would you pay a thousand dollars to like face your nightmares? Like, well, that's freaking deep and scary. Uh, again, that's the, you're you're speaking on things I need, not what I want, right? So I would just say it straight up, like, Ted, would you pay me a thousand dollars to imp to to dramatically improve the quality of your relationship with your wife or with your girlfriend? Okay, so just pick one, and then okay. and then when I say yes. Then you help me face my worst relationships. Like, let's say it's with my dad or something, right? Or like one of my uncles or my aunt or my mom or something, someone I hate. And then you help me fix that relationship. And by fixing that nightmare relationship, my relationship with my wife or spouse or girlfriend gets better. Right? Okay. Okay. I can go about this spouse, for example, thing. Like, would you pay me a thousand bucks for... Um, to help you to improve your relationship with a spouse. Yeah. Done. Done. Thousand bucks, take it, take it, take my money. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Now I feel, I feel my pockets getting lighter. My pockets are getting lighter. You're taking my <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Amazing. I Great got the point that um, I, I can feel what people need, but or like what individual person would need, but uh, it can be too scary for them. <laughs> yeah, that's like me saying right now, like, hey, um, Ego, do you do you want your dream body? Yeah. Okay, cool. So now I know you want your dream body. Now, imagine I said, okay, would you pay me a thousand dollars to do a thousand push-ups and a thousand sit-ups today? <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. But I know you need that, right? But I don't <laughs> say that. All I say is, hey, would you pay me a thousand dollars to get your dream body? You say, yep. Cool. Take the money, bring you into the program. All right, Eagle, what we're going to do is we're going to start you out by getting you to do your push-up test. See how many push-ups you can do today. Cool. Oh, you got four? Okay, cool. You got four today. Next week, we're going to aim for five. And now I start working with you and eventually get you to do a thousand push-ups. Eventually get you to do a thousand sit-ups, right? So we inch you closer and closer towards the dream body by getting you to do what you need to do, not what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. What about authenticity? Does it sell? Not really. Authenticity, of course. Of course. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm authentic. I'm not trying to be someone else. I'm telling you what you need to hear right now and I'm understanding what you want. And so like you got you gotta make that balance. It's like, okay, what 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 does the audience want and what do they actually need? And then you gotta find that happy medium. But you no no point are you selling your soul. Mm -hmm. at no point should you be deaf to to your inner you know desires and oh no i'm talking about the uh, selling like uh become the most authentic yourself oh, or learn no, 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 no. that won't sell okay cool okay fine i already told you what sells i told you the four things <laughs> yeah true i well, this happens all the time i give people like the exact bullet point here are the four things and then they're like oh but what about this it's like hey i'm vegan Oh, but do you, so do you eat fish? No, I'm literally vegan. So like, no, no meat. Like, but I'm <laughs> vegan. or it's like you tell someone you're gluten free, and they're like, wait, so like, no bread? Oh, I'm gluten free. <laughs> so I gave you the four. It's only the four, and uh, we've already, you know, established that you'd really crush that relationship niche. Just got to find a way to mm -hmm. 
feel authentic within that niche. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, cheers. Jeffrey with the webcam setup, man, making making me feel like an amateur right now. Dang. You're, you you, you got to work on your audio settings, though, because you're muted. There, this should be a lot better. Oh, dude, that's like Hollywood quality, man. Can't even see <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's overhead. Unreal. Um. So it's good to talk to you. Uh, I'll be talking to you soon. I'm in the business with a weekend. In a weekend, uh, I've been working with Yelena and uh, it's wrapped up. Uh, my setup is a little bit tricky, uh, but I have a, I want to just kind of hop in here and just get a little bit of taste of where your brain's at before I end up talking to you. So there's the RMS that Yelena has helped me work, but I know it needs work. I really know it's not there. It's helping men overcome self-doubt to amplify their career success and secure a high quality woman. Now it's, I see the problems and I'm just curious what you see yourself. That's a, that's, that's definitely like close. That's like on the, it's like the, the tipping edge. It's like very, very close. It's like right there. I think with a couple small tweaks, it's, it's perfect. So, um, as I was saying to Eagle here, um, or, how do you pronounce your name? Jeff Bon Cristiano. Sorry, sorry, Eagle. Eagle. My name is Agle. Agle. I'm sorry. Okay, we, yeah. we don't have that, word in, that name in Canada. Agle. Um, Jeffrey's last name is a whole nother beast. <laughs> yeah. Bon yep. Cristiano. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> nice, nice. So, I help men overcome self doubt so they can amplify their career success and secure a high quality woman. Okay. So yeah, it's close. It's very close. I would just, I, I, I like to cut right to the chase and say what people want to hear first and not what they need. So Overcoming self-doubt is not something I want to pay a thousand bucks for, but landing my dream woman for sure, or landing my dream career for sure. And if what is required to make that happen is something like overcoming self-doubt, so be it. You don't have to necessarily tell me that in the RMS. I would just cut right to the chase and say something like, I help men and I would pick one of those two. It seems like you're undecided. You, you probably want to help them with both and you can, but I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't say that. I would, I would pick one. Um, so what, 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 what is more exciting to you in this moment, helping men land their dream woman or dream career? Um, I obsess about work. So I love talking about this. I love talking about, you know, figuring out my RMS. I love figuring out how to make courses, be more efficient online, be everything like creating. And that excites me every day. Cool. Okay. So the dream woman, I think is a byproduct of that. I think it's like, Hey, yeah. if you become like the ultimate, uh, the ultimate businessman or the best CEO, the best version of yourself. And you're like able to make more money. I think you naturally give off the vibe. You'll attract your dream woman. You'll attract, you know, you, you'll rid yourself of self-doubt. All these other things become like a byproduct of just mastering your work, right? So yeah. something along the lines of, uh, do, do you want to help people like land their dream career or build their dream business or what direction do you want to go there? Well, it's, it, this is where I think that the longer conversation would come in play because there is some other information that's not worth boring other people with, but there's a, a mix of too much much happening of already having an audience that thinks I'm this loving this and having something that's uh, actually monetizable. So there is a problem there. Um, uh, yeah, it's hard to answer that. Um, so I'm not necessarily a career specific ultra highly successful career men 
uh, or businessman. I'm a, a professional creator and ended up with some accolade online for my personality, which has nothing to do with what I made money for, but it's like branding. So mm. um, I did design and I have a lot of skill and design and branding and all that stuff. Uh, so anyways, the my audience came for my beard and masculinity and men's health and men's personal development. Those two don't go together, but it's like, I want to teach them some personal branding, how to be cool, how to be better online, how to be all that stuff. And it's, I don't really know how to work at all. And it's gotcha, gotcha. messy. Gotcha. You know, you have a lot of the good raw materials though. Yeah. The it's, I have the skills and a lot of the audience already. I have a lot of things, but it's a matter of finding that peak there. Sure. 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 Finding the overlap, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what you want to do and what you can do and what your audience wants from you. Yeah. I prioritize the former, by the way. I prioritize what it is that you want to do and what you can do. And the audience will be attracted to that, whatever audience that ends up being, whether it's your current audience or whether it's a blend of your current audience with new audience, whatever. Um, you, can, you can always create a new audience. But mm. what you want to do and what you can do, that's like almost almost set in stone already. You're not really going to change that. Mm. So prioritize the former for sure. Um, but it sounds like, you know, just by talking to you right now, it sounds like something very valuable for other people and something that you want to talk about and help people with is like helping them dial in that personal brand, helping them dial in the content, helping them dial in the professionalism of what they do and how they come across to other people that's a that's a really big need dude like it's what are the yeah. first thing i said to you before you even unmuted i was like damn look at that camera set up like mm -hmm. we're talking about would you pay me a thousand dollars for blank it's like i'd pay you i'd pay you a thousand bucks to look like that like i don't yeah. want room and camera and lighting and beard and everything to look like that mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah so that's what i really want to teach people is like and it's hard because one of the things in my head isn't it's not really tasteful but it would be like how to be cooler in your life, like, oh, sure. and more efficient too. Like I, this is set up so that it's as easy as filming on my phone, but I'm also not against phones. I'm actually, actually pro authenticity, like laptop camera. It's just, oh. so I'm trying to figure out how to word that to be like, I'll teach you how to be cool in everything that you do, but I don't know how to word that. Like, no, totally, totally, totally. Um, yeah, that can be like the through line, right? The, the, the mm. through line through it all. Like how to be cool in everything you do. But like ultimately, I want to know what is that end result that you think we could work towards so that I'm happy to pay you, for example, the thousand bucks. So Yeah, I, and that's where I'm stuck. Were you here earlier in the call when I was talking to Michael Sad? Yeah, and I've actually connected with him outside of the group. So we're friends like, at this point. So yeah. Cool. It was a great example, right? Of like, he just loves helping people dial in how they teach, how they educate. And he kept telling me that. And I'm like, but I'm not paying you a thousand bucks for that, dude. Unless yeah. you tie it into something else. Now that he's tied it into MRR, I'm like, dude, I might hire that guy. Yeah. I want MRR. So it's what like is MRR? Monthly recurring revenue. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's more, more subscribers. Yeah. Paying, more paying subscribers, membership people. So, um, all we've got to do, bro, is take what you want to do, just like we do with Michael Sad, and then tie it to an end result like that. Even if it seems disconnected, we can definitely find a bridge to connect it. And I'm thinking one of the things might be like, are, are you on YouTube? Yep. What is your YouTube? Uh, it's Jeffrey Bon Cristiano. J E F F R E Y. Yeah, yeah it'll come up as the last name. Yeah. Okay, so oh, you've been kind of inconsistent on YouTube, is that right, recently? Yeah, I've, well, it started as, I honestly started it just because I loved helping people. I didn't actually do it for any other reason. I've helped, uh, 
a lot of YouTube channels too. So I just decided to make my own and then I just kept going year after year, but I've, it's never really made money to be honest. Well, you haven't probably had a good call to action that led to a good freebie that led to a community DM script that led to a call right, to which Yelena now has set me up. So I'm like pretty much done with a whole business in a weekend and I'm updating old stuff, but yeah. Yeah, like your stuff just looks ridiculously good. Uh, Thank you. you. Definitely offer some form of some form of help helping people like just look way more professional online. Yeah, yeah, and and that trick carries through to everything else, Instagram and all that. So, um, helping help. I keep trying new. New stuff, but yeah, like, like it could be something simple. Like I help influencers. Um, I help influencers, or I help I help content creators. I help coaches, even even something like coaches. I help coaches. I have high ticket coaches, whatever. Um, coaches attract higher paying clients with higher quality content, or something like that. Wow. Something along those lines. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. Everybody says you're impressive to talk to about this stuff. It's, it shows every <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Some something along those lines. That's the first thing. Just a thought cut from my head. But um I think as long as you tie it in with you definitely in the make money space. Oh, okay, you think so? Okay. Would, yeah, definitely in the make money space. It is now a matter of how do we word it in a way that aligns with you and makes sense when we then talk about um, how you're going to help them, which is probably through making their content look way better. And and now I would love to do that. And also just as they are as a person, right? Like fix themselves and then you fix their content in a way. Yeah. Or their attitude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that too, bro. It's like, like as I was saying with um, Agle, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Agle. Like, you're going to help them with their self-improvement. Ultimately, that's like probably going to be like the bedrock of it, the foundation of it. Otherwise, nothing else is even going to work. But I don't want to pay you $1,000 for that. I want to pay $1,000 to make my content look and feel way better. And if it requires me doing some meditation and breath work and writing down my goals, so be it. Let's do it. I'll become a better man if that's what it's required. I'll grow my freaking beard if that's what I got to do, man. Right. Like, so, which is looking good, by the way. I saw that you added it pretty recently. <laughs> it's looking good. Getting better and better every day. Um, I just got an idea. What do you think of this? Would you pay me $1,000 to, well, I'll say, attract higher paying clients well, let me reverse that. Would you pay me a thousand dollars to get? Mm, I'm not sure what the get would be, but to make <clears throat> by making Hollywood level content without being an expert. Thousand percent, man. You know who? Yeah, yeah. Like you know what you could do too, bro. You could even just go through. What's this guy's name? Who, who just bought consulting dot com? I think right, this guy. This. Um, this guy just recently oh bank. yeah from uh sam's yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah. so his content like it reminds me of what i just saw from you it's just really clean cut right you've already seen it i won't show you but yeah like he could be an example of like the kind of content you could help people make it's like and it's really what do they need they need like a setup they need a camera they need a mic they need a script done you know, but, yeah. they need, but they need the mindset first, which is what you can help them with too. Right. So what would be, uh, and I'll, I'll share the floor after this, just real quick, is in that phrase of thinking, uh, like I'll get you high quality Hollywood level content without expen expensive equipment and uh, being an expert, what do they, what would be the first thing? Like I'll pay you, would you pay me a thousand dollars to blank by creating high quality content without being an expert what would be that first part like the the real real like 
takeaway. Yeah. Would you pay me a thousand dollars to, um, this is where like, yeah. this is where it helps to write out a list of like a bunch of different things you can pick from and, and yeah. move stuff around. But I think it's going to okay. be something along the lines of like, would you pay me a thousand dollars? Would you pay me a thousand dollars to, um, ultimately for lack of a better word here, like just make more money every month by mm. putting out higher quality content. That's in a nutshell, in a rough form, that's what it is, right? That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. And yeah, dude, when you look at like everyone's shitty content, like shitty looking content, I should say, not shitty content, but shitty looking content. And then you ask them that question, like, wait, what if your content was the same as it is now in terms of um, this subject matter, but it looked way better? Like, yeah, it's worth a thousand bucks for sure. If I could press a button, a thousand bucks, boop, and it all looks freaking incredible. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. I'm going to run with that until we talk further, and I'll I'll share the floor now. Sounds good. Sure. Thank you. I, I, yeah, Cheers. man. Uh, guys, I've got to go in about five, ten minutes, so I'm happy to take like one, maybe two more people if we're quick. Hey, Ted. Hey. Hey, I'm Barika. <laughs> I'm new to the space. Tori brought me, I guess. It would have been nice if she was still on this call. But um, I went through the same program she went through. I became a regenerative health practitioner or coach. And I'm trying to niche down. So <laughs> I wanted to, I know this isn't a niche call, but I guess, you know, since we're talking about what we're helping people with, I, I, I don't know if you could quickly help me um, within a minute or so. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but this is what I have. Yeah. Um, I help women restore hormonal imbalance um, by getting to the root cause. I don't know if that's too general or if it's too. <laughs> I have to pee so bad right now. Okay. I'm going to go pee. <laughs> okay. I'm going to think about what you just said. I'll be back in approximately okay. 60 seconds. Okay. I'll think about what you said as I pee. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it came to me. Okay. Being is a great time to think about things, meditate on things. I sit down when I pee too. It like, uh, I can just completely relax. Hope that's not too much info. But um, as I was peeing, I was thinking about how hormone balancing is a process. To you, that might be an end result. You, the coach, you're like, yeah, we got the hormones balanced. But to the client, that's just part of the process. They're not waking up every day and they're like, oh, I'm going to go balance my hormones. Right? You, the coach, you're like, oh, my God, hormones are so important. I'm going to help you balance them. You know that they don't. So the bait is incorrect bait. It's ineffective bait. If Jeffrey and I were to go fishing, we would not put apple slices on our hooks even though we like apples because we know the fish won't bite that bait we would put worms on our hooks because we know fish like worms i don't like eating worms personally jeffrey do you like eating worms <sighs> no jeffrey doesn't like eating worms either but what are we gonna do we're gonna put them on the hook anyway because it works 
So you can't be putting hormone balancing on your hook when these women don't even know what hormone balancing is. They don't even know that's a concept. These women wake up in the morning and they've got lower back pain. It's aching. They've got headaches. They have insomnia. They have caffeine addiction. They have mental fog. They have guts that they want to get rid of. Like their belly is just way too big. The scales like way, scale doesn't even work. They're like breaking the scale and they step on it. Like they've got evident problems that they know about. And if you come across and let them know that you can help them eliminate those problems, that's really good bait. And if you can do it via hormone balancing, so be it. Cool. I would use hormone balancing as a tool in your toolkit. I wouldn't use it as the bait. Yeah. Okay. So I would pick one of the main problems that you know these women have, which is probably they're overweight, they're chronically fatigued. Even those two, you'd be like, I help women lose weight and eliminate chronic fatigue through hormone balancing. What was the other thing you mentioned in your RMS or your statement? You said, um, I said restore hormone balance by getting to the root cause, but that is uh -huh. the root cause. Yeah, there, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, exactly, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so something like I help, I help women lose weight and eliminate chronic fatigue through hormone, through natural hormone balancing techniques, through effortless natural, through effortless natural hormone balancing techniques, so they can get to the root cause. Something like that, I think, would uh, resonate with the masses, which is who you're trying to hit. Okay, thank you. Makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Cool. Because think about this. If you're a marathon runner and you can't run marathons anymore because your knees are killing you, and, I come, and you come across me and you're scrolling on YouTube and you see a thumbnail of me saying like, I help runners with hip alignment. You'd keep scrolling. Yeah, hip alignment, what's that? But little do you know, hip alignment is the cause of the knee pain. But you keep scrolling because you didn't know that. And so me as the coach, as the, as the YouTuber in this case, I'd have to put in the thumbnail instead, how to eliminate knee pain forever so you can run marathons. Now I click, or now you click, and then you find out in the first 30 seconds, I say, hey, if you've got knee pain and you want to complete marathons, I'm going to help you eliminate the knee pain forever through something called hip alignment. Here's how it works. Well, the reason your knee's in pain is because your legs are two different lengths and one leg is hitting the ground harder than the other because your hips are out of whack. Here's how to balance that. This yoga pose, that yoga pose, this stretch, this massage technique, boom, you're good to go. Like, yeah, you got to remember that these people have no idea what hormone balancing even is. Got but it. They, but they need it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, guys, I've got to run. I have maybe like three more minutes. Somebody wants to go. Hopefully, um, this call is helpful for anyone who didn't even ask a question yet. Uh, yeah, Ted, can I uh, run my brief? Um, can I run my pitch, run my pitch by you? Can I, uh, ask yeah, you to yeah. Jordan, Jordan, what's up? Uh, Jordan, we'll take you for like a minute if we can, and yeah. then DBS will take you for a minute too. For sure. Um, so, would you pay me a thousand bucks to help you lose twenty-five to forty pounds in ninety days, um, find belonging within a like-minded community, eliminate chronic pain, and secure financial freedom? I mean, that's a little all over the place, but mostly though the weight and finding uh, belonging in the community and eliminating chronic pain. Those are three completely different things. I know understand how you could I understand how you could put them together, but I wouldn't market it like that at all. That's com it feels completely random. So I would just pick one of the things, dude. And market to Okay. Them. Pick Yeah, just, I mean wait, I guess. Yeah. Pick one, go for it. You can still you, help people with the community, you can cool. still help them with the chronic pain, you can still help them with the make money, you can still help them with all that shit, but you gotta put the bait. 
what you're trying to do is you're trying to put like a worm and some cheesecake and some melon on the hook all at once. And it's like, that shit doesn't combine well, bro. Yeah. Uh-huh. I feel combine? you. Cool. All you need I think to weight work. loss is probably really good. I can help them for sure with that. It's marketable. Yeah, and yeah. I can take get all the other benefits. They'll get the over-deliver, but I'll yeah. have to give them the right? Bait and over-deliver, my friend. That's right. Super. Thanks so much, Ted. Cheers. Divyash. Yeah. Hey, Ted. So I was just refining my offer throughout the call. So here's my statement. I'll say this, then I'll pitch the offer to you. So I help busy men get rid of their stubborn fat and achieve their ideal dream body without spending hours in the gym or kitchen. Uh, is it good or like, do I need to tweak it a bit? It's, it's, that's, it's good enough. So I, I was like, I would get rid I of, some... I'd, I'd, I'd get rid of busy men though. That's like what man isn't busy, you know? Okay. Like men, I mean, all humans, man, we're busy. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, that's about it. So that's pitch. how pitch. I would pitch as well. Ted, would you pay me a thousand dollars to help you get rid of your stubborn fat and achieve your ideal dream body without spending hours in the gym or the kitchen? Yeah, I'd, I'd just reverse the order. So I'd be like, hey, Ted, would you pay me a thousand bucks to achieve your dream body by by eliminating by by complete by eliminating by completely eliminating that stubborn belly fat? Without, without ever being hungry, without ever being hungry, something like that. Uh, without ever being hungry, like I wanted to focus that they might be busy and not spend time in the gym or kitchen. Yeah, you could say without needing to go to the gym, or spending time in the kitchen. Yeah, but we like spending time in the kitchen. That's why I go to eat. Okay. I don't I don't hate the kitchen. I want to go there to eat. I d I don't want to be hungry though. And I don't want to restrict my favorite foods. I don't want to cut up my favorite foods either. Okay. Uh another quick thing is uh should I be focusing on the belly fat or would it be too specific? Should I just say excess fat? Stubborn you could say excess fat. fat, that's fine. Stubborn fat's good. Body okay. fat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Josh Font, what if you know what you want to teach, but have no offer niche as hetero? I want to teach yoga. Yeah, I definitely got to run right now, dude. Um, but if you want to teach yoga, that's part of the process. That's not an end result, right? So you got just you got to figure out what end result you're going to help people with. There's only four to pick from. It's either better relationships, more money, pain free, or um, beauty. And then tie in what you want to do to one of those four things. And yoga can be part of the process. But if you haven't gone through, I don't know if you, have you gone through some of our workshops yet already inside of school? We've done plenty of workshops going into depth on like how you can craft an offer based off your desires. Um. I, I've I've been through a few, I think. Okay. It's okay. been a while. Yeah, well Yeah, well these ones I'd strongly encourage ones I'd strongly pick 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 it's called What to Offer. It's called What to Offer. And, and these ones will probably really help you out. These ones will probably really help you out. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Dark mode, yeah. Dark mode, yeah. <laughs> I'm in uh, I'm in the beta. I'm in the beta group. Jeffrey, you got your hand raised? Are you waving goodbye? I had a, a thought that might help somebody. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Daivyesh, who was just speaking. Uh, when I heard the dream body, I was like, oh, what does that mean? And then the idea I was thinking is because fitness is kind of well, there's a lot of fitness in the field. What if the specificity wasn't really as much in the kitchen and stuff, but about what the body is like, 
get a body like Brad Pitt without spending time in the whatever, right? Like, or like a god or something like that, where the specific specificity is visual in my mind. I don't know, an idea. That's great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I'll think about it. Thanks. The, the, the Thanks. only uh the only thing there I'd say then is like, well, if he's gonna promise something like a body like Brad Pitt, then he should also have a body like Brad Pitt, right? Whereas dream body is much for opening interpretation, although it has less gravitational force, I agree, than something like Brad Pitt. Um, but yeah, and that's the thing about when you sell in beauty, you got to be, you got to be beautiful yourself. Like our top client, she's bringing in like three to 500 grand a month, helping women look like goddesses. What does she look like? A goddess. Like she's like a freak of nature. She looks like a goddess. And it's like, that's what women want. So that's why she's able to crush it. But if she was like even slightly overweight, there's no way she'd be able to crush it with that offer. So that's why a lot of influencers, they do steroids and stuff because they need to look like out of this world, incredible because um, they want to sell that stuff. But that's, that's the issue with the beauty side of things. But um, yeah. Yeah, and that's not saying you need to do steroids, dude. I'm just saying like a lot of people try and like cheat the system by doing that. But anyways, I've got to run. Uh, have a great rest of your day, y'all. I'll see you inside school. And Jeffrey, we'll talk soon. Peace, peace, peace. Bye, bye, bye.